I believe we can show you something here about the false massage and these two first slides. We want to start right out in uh, Matthew 24, 4. Yahushua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Messiah, and shall deceive many. We know that the church world today is what he's referring to. So many people are being deceived. The many that are in the organized religions worldwide. But the, he said these will come saying, I am the Messiah. Matthew 24, 11. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive men. Now that's been happening even before the Messiah was here, all down through the ages. And it's worse in the last days than it ever has been. We read in 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, 13th through the 15th verse, about Satan coming as an angel of light. And he says, it's no mystery, Paul does, that if his ministers come, they come as ministers of righteousness. There's much deceivement going on in the world today by man. This is how Satan has always used mankind to deceive other man, men, other mankind. 24, 24 of Matthew. For there shall rise false messiahs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, or the remnant, brother. And this is what's been taking place all over the world. As we had in a previous message, men stating you do not have to keep the Torah, or you do not have to observe the law, that they are under grace. So we see in that last video we produced, there's many false messiahs and false prophets. And they would deceive the elect if it were possible. But it's not possible. The very elect today are reading, studying, and praying. Hallelujah. I believe, and I know that I am, and I know that my family is, we're seeking the face of Yahuwah and asking him to help us here that we might help other people. And this thing about false messiahs, I want to show you in the second slide how easily it is to refute these false messiahs. First of all, I've seen a YouTube video presented how that, uh, that people were claiming to be the messiah. And they, one of them was in the Philippines walking around in the flesh. And he was living in a mansion. And he had helicopters and he had jets. And of course, I've heard that the people's wages in the Philippines is so small. How in the world that he deceived so many people that he was living even higher than the kings were living? But that's what's taking place, brethren. But of course, his end will be according to his works. But we go on here in Thessalonians. I had this in a previous program, and we want to show you. This is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through the 18th verse. He says, I would not have you to be ignorant or unlearned, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that are in the graves, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now, the reason we are not to sorrow over these that are asleep in the grave, that are dead, is because as believers, we have hope in the resurrection. Hallelujah today. But these people have no hope because they have not the Spirit and they, they kept not the commandments of you. Look, as we go on, first that alone 4.14, For if we believe that Yahushua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahushua will Elohim bring with him. I have people tell me that when you died, they would use Paul's sins in 2 Corinthians 5.8, and they would use that and say, well, these, he, the, those that are dead, he's going to bring with them. And they would use this verse. But that's not what the, this verse is teaching. You have to read the next three verses to understand 
what the 14th verse is really saying. How does Mashiach bring the saints with him? This one explains it, 15, 16, 17. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15. For this we say unto you by the words of the Master, Yahushua, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Master shall not permit them which are asleep. For Yahushua himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, that's the seventh trumpet, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of Elohim, seventh trumpet, and the dead in Messiah shall arise first. Those that are in the grave, that's what Paul was saying, they have hope because they kept the commandments, they kept the Torah, they kept the writings of the, of the word of Yahushua and of the prophets, and they have hope in the resurrection and the judgment of eternal life. So that's what this is saying here. At the coming of the master, the dead are going to rise first. How old are you today? Then we go on and read, First Thessalonians 4.17, Then we which are alive and remnant remain, talk about the remnant, our elect, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the master in the air. And so shall we ever be with the master. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Brethren, Paul goes on to tell us here, this is actually a mystery he revealed to us, Apostle Paul did, and he's showing us that the remnant are going to be caught up as soon as the resurrection takes place, as soon as those that are believers in the Mashiach are raised up from the dead, then they that are the remnant that are standing here are going to be changed in a moment, a twinkle of an eye, and we're caught up with them in the clouds. Now, he don't tell you, but in, Thessal in this Thessalonian tree, he don't tell you about the judgment. Peter said judgment must first begin at the house of Yahuwah, 4.17 of 1 Peter. Then Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.10, we must all appear before the judgment seat that every person may receive the things done in his body according to that done, whether it be good or bad, showing you even though we are caught up with these that are in the graves and they're coming from the graves, he's not bringing them from heaven. He's coming back and he's going to bring them from the graves. Then we're going up, the, those in the tombs are coming up and we're going to go up with them in the air to meet the Mashiach, hallelujah, today for the judgment to take place to determine if you will have immortality, eternal life, and if you will have a body given unto you like his glorified body, hallelujah, today. So we can see that in the word today as we understand there is a, a major false messiahs all over the world and these things here tells us about the judgment and what really takes place. Now let's go to slide number two and continue explaining this. Slide number two. As lightning comes out of the east. As lightning comes out of the east. Major point. Wherefore? Matthew 24, 26. Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Believe it not. You see what the Mashiach is saying here. When people said that the Messiah is over here or is over there, don't believe him. I was in a prayer meeting one time. For many days, 30 days in a row every night. And they got carried away. But this verse right here, I told them about this verse in the Bible. This was many, many years ago. And it stopped some of the things that, how they were getting carried away. It takes the scriptures, brethren, to put people in their place. Matthew 24, 27. 
For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Showing you the quickness that he is coming, showing you it's in the air, that he's coming in the clouds of heaven. As the lightning that come out of the east, and shineth to the west, so quickly, like a blink of an eye. This is the real Messiah, hallelujah, today. Of course, I know they're going to come up people is with holograms and try to show all kind of things to de deceive people today. But you and I will understand because of all of the signs that involve the coming of the Mashiach. Matthew 24, 28. For wheresoever the carcass, talking about the person that did their body, is... There will the eagles, talk about the angels, be gathered together. This is where and how the Mashiach, he comes like lightning. But then he sends the angels as eagles. The angels is going to come and they're going to take the person, not the body that went down, but the spirit person that comes up in the first resurrection. They are the eagles this verse is talking about. And they're going to be gathered together. All believers will be gathered from the place of their rest, brethren, from their graves out here. That's why Paul was saying, we can rest in hope. The world cannot, but you those people can't. So we can see the his coming here, how he's coming how quickly it is, and you cannot be deceived, brethren. Somebody walking around in the flesh, do they claim him to be the Messiah? Read him this verse. Then on Matthew 24, 29, as we continue, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All of these rapture preachers, I wish they would read and understand what this is saying here about going through tribulation. And it is talking about after the tribulation of those days. And then shall appear the sign. After all these things, the last 42 months, in that time frame, in that last 42 months, then shall appear the sign of the sun out in heaven. And then shall all the tribes, the nations, of the earth mourn. These nations are going to mourn. Why? Because their rulership is going to be taken away from them. They won't be ruling no more over Yahuwah's people and killing them out, you and I. We've been slaves all of our life. The elitist, globalist, they have all ruled. The two beasts, the church entity system and the tyrannical governments worldwide have been ruling over this earth. That's going to be taken away from them. They're going to mourn, brethren, right here. And they shall see the Son of Man. They're going to see the Son of Man. Hallelujah today. Coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The people that are alive will will see the Mashiach coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, but the people will not see the believers being raised from the grave, brethren, or the remnant that are changed, because they will be spirit beings. The angel will be taking us to the judgment seat of the Messiah in the clouds, which we just spoke on the previous slide. But we can see they're going to see the Mashiach coming in the heavens. But they're not going to see the saints come up as because they're spirit beings. The only that way they would know that one of the remnant was changed and was gone was taken if they were standing right beside it. And the scriptures teach the remnant's going to be in the wilderness. And the people, the unbelievers, not going to be there. Just the remnant. So who's going to miss it? Nobody. They're not going to miss you. We've been slaves to this beef system all our life, but they won't miss you because you'll be gone the black of an eye. 
Matthew 24, 31. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together his elect, the remnant, from the four winds, four directions, east, west, north, south, from one end of heaven to the other. Hallelujah today. We will be gathered up, the remnant will, with the believers that's in the grave. They're going to come out first. Then we're going up with them to the judgment. Hallelujah today. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah for his truths of his word. And these people that are rapture, brother, they're going to be standing here, some of them are, because they're not going anywhere. This tribulation he's talking about here, hallelujah today, the world's going to forced tribulation up on the assemblies, up on the church system, if you would understand. Not the church system, the world, but Yahuwah's true remnant of people. That's why the, he takes them into the wilderness. Or they would kill them out. They wouldn't be no remnant. Let's go to slide number three. The wrath of the Lamb. The sixth seal. Slide number three. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. Signs, you can't miss this. If you're here, hallelujah, you're going to see the signs of the coming of the Son of Man can't miss all of these. And the stars of heaven fell on the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when his robe was gathered. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place. Dreadful time, brother. When we shout clouds of the clouds of heaven, there's going to be a great earthquake across face this earth. A lot of shaking going on. Revelation 6.15 And the kings of the earth, the rulers, and the great men, more rulers, and the rich men, more rulers, and the chief captains, more rulers, and the mighty men, all of these are rulers, and ever bond men, slaves, and ever free men, men that thinks they're free, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. These have not the spirit of Yahuwah, brethren, and they flee to the bunkers. Yes, they've got food stored up to sustain them for about 10 years, who knows, 15 years. But they're going to flee to their bunkers, these men are. When they see all this take place, they're going to flee to the bunkers, to the submarines, wherever they can hide from the face of the Holy Creator coming in the clouds of heaven. Because they didn't believe. They did not believe the word. Revelation 6.16 And said to the mountain and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. They're not going to miss seeing the coming of the Mashiach. They're going to see him coming. Hallelujah today. And from the wrath of the Lamb, he's going to come sitting on the throne. The resurrection takes place. Judgment takes place. Hallelujah. Matthew 25, 31 through 46 verse. The sheep and the goats. The same great separation of his people, of the believers. Peter says judgment must first begin at the house of Yahuwah. 417. First book of Peter. 417. Fourth chapter 17. First tells us judgment must begin at the house of Elohim. That's you and I. That's believers. That's believers in the dust that comes up. That's believers that standing here. But this is the day of his wrath, brother. From the time the Messiah comes and the resurrection takes place, 
and the remnant changed. Then the seven vials and a third woe is poured out upon the earth. Revelation 16 chapter. Revelation 11, 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. Revelation 16 chapter. Paul says the saints are not appointed unto wrath. We're going to be changed and go to the judgment while the world suffers the wrath of Yahuwah, the last seven vials and the third world. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. This year is showing the nation are angry is when their rulership is all taken away from them. And then the wrath is come, Revelation 16 chapter, in the time of the dead, those that are in the grave that comes up and the remnant standing here are going to be changed. And they shall be judged and they shall be given rewards unto the servants, the prophets. All of the prophets, all of the disciples will be there, brother. And the saints, the believers, down through the ages, and them that fear thy name, even small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroyed the earth. The earth today is being destroyed by these great men out here. They're controlling things. They're controlling all of the chemtrails. They're controlling they're the shadow government. They're trying to bring in a globalist new world order. These are the people that he's going to destroy right here. That's who he's talking about. The assembly is already gone, brethren, the true body of believers. But all the rest, the evil out here, he's going to destroy the rulers. And that's talking about the church system, the false religious system worldwide. Many religions worldwide that is false. Only one true body of believers. All of the false religions, all of the governments are going to be destroyed. Daniel tells us that in the second chapter of Daniel. He's going to destroy these kingdoms. Yes, there will be nations left, small remnants of people under the age of accountability that will enter into the millennial kingdom. How old are you all today? Let's go to the, the summary. This is the end of this presentation. You can find our main website and just simply, if you download this video, clicking on this, will take you straight to our website or you can type it in your browser and the wave sheet we have on there. But all of these people, brother, when the Mashiach comes, that he's going to destroy, as we were just stating, when he comes, those He's going to destroy them, he said, who destroyed the earth. You mean man destroyed the earth? Yes, this, this last this last generation, there's going to be wars. That This God and may God is coming up. Could be the things taking place that's generating that in Syria, and it looks like it is. Ezekiel 38 and 39. But he's going to destroy the rulers, brethren, that destroyed this earth. Religious and governmental rulers that have not his Holy Spirit. They're going to be destroyed. And after the battle of Armageddon is over, he's going to cleanse this earth. That's when the last seven vials are poured out. And woe is up to the battle of Armageddon, the last one. And he destroys all of them in the, the battle of Armageddon. The armies, he brings them together and destroys them at the last war. He'll send a spirit amongst them men and they'll kill each other by the millions. Because the blood's going to run to the horse's bridle. That's about four foot deep. I don't know what valley, if it's the valley of Jezreel, which is in Israel. Or if it's another valley that men talk about that's in Syria. But he's going to destroy them that destroyed the earth. 
Then he's going to gather out after the battle of Armageddon. He's going to send out the angels and will be angels at that time. And will gather all of the wicked worldwide and cast them into a lake of fire. And Noah's day they drowned by water. But this day they're going to go and be cast into the fire. That's all the wicked. They will not go into the millennial kingdom. But those under the age of accountability, there will be small nations will go into the millennial kingdom. Nations. Not one nation. Not no, no world order, but, one, but many nations. And they will go into the millennial kingdom. And they will inherit all the houses and lands that was stolen from them, brethren. Hallelujah. They won't have to buy all that stuff. It will be given to them. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah. I hope and pray that you're ready for the coming of the Messiah and the judgment that's at the door. I pray for the remnant as always all around the world. My name's Moshe Eliyahu. Shalom. Till next time.